gentlemen, and we will now have our Democratic candidate for the second congressional district. Welcome. One candidate of the four in this race, Mr. Jonathan Dunkley. Not present are Gwen Combs, Paul J. Spencer, and Representative Clark Tucker. Mr. Dunkley, you may now present your opening statement. Good evening. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the young people responsible for putting this together, the adults that have supported this effort tonight. Um, we are thrilled to be here in Saline County, Benton High School. Uh, as my as young man stated, who I got to visit with briefly before this, my name is Jonathan Dunkley, and we are seeking your support and your vote for the 2nd Congressional District. Um, we are a candidate that's non-traditional, if you can't tell just by looking at me. We typically uh, hadn't been participating in these kinds of races. So it's been about 40 years since you've seen an African-American male run for Congress in Arkansas. So it's past time, and we're glad to be here, not because of an African-American male, but because I serve this community, and I deserve people's true look at as a candidate. We spoke last night and had a debate, and we spoke about how um, everyone needs an opportunity to be involved in politics, and everyone deserves a right regardless if they run for office prior to this, and so we're thrilled to have an opportunity to be here tonight. Mr. Dunkley, your first question is, how long have you been a registered member of your party? Have you ever been registered as a member of another party? If so, why did you change, and what are primary concerns or changes you plan to address if you are elected? So I've been a registered Democrat since 2000, um, since the year 2000. I was a registered Republican in the state of Florida. That's where I grew up. Um, my parents are Republican. My father's Jamaican, and he prided himself on being a Jamaican Republican for some reason, but he was thrilled to say, I'm not a Democrat, I'm a Republican. So it's great, right? So I grew up um, as a Republican. And again, my father was a business owner, and I think uh, his political affiliation had a lot to do with taxes and his belief in um, smaller government and conserving funds and resources. Um, but I've been thrilled to be a registered Democrat as I've grown up. I see the benefits of absolutely being conservative with our funds and our resources, but it, um, also ensuring that those with the least amongst us have an opportunity to actualize themselves here in this great country. Did I answer your third part of your question? Yes, sir. Good deal. The second question is, we've seen many reports of poor health care from the Veterans Administration. How do you plan to help the veterans get real access to quality health care? And I'm, I'm glad you asked about the veterans specifically. Everyone knows the contribution they make to this great nation and the society. We, we don't have the freedoms we get to exercise without their contributions to us. So hats off to them for what they do, their families that are left behind that make that sacrifice along with them. As it relates to health care, our campaign has been very clear. We really are advocating for what we see as a progressive value, and not progressive in the sense of progressive or conservative, in the sense of progress for our people. And when you talk about veterans health care, you talk about Medicaid, you talk about Medicare, you talk about single, um, you talk about health insurance premiums for those in a certain pool. All these systems create what I know to be a jumbled mess. And we do not, we do not in this nation have adequate health care, not for veterans, not for anyone. And so the veterans I see as being able to access any doctor that will provide the care that they need. That has to be the key. It doesn't, they don't have to be shepherded off to this veteran system. We can open the system up, have a single payer healthcare system and make certain that our veterans, the elderly, the, the poor children, and those of us that are paying into private insurance pools currently have an opportunity at affordable healthcare. Thank you, Mr. Dunkley. You may now make your closing statement. You have two minutes. Thank you. Again, I wanna thank the young people. I wanna thank everyone here tonight. Uh, we're doing our best to get all throughout this district. We've been enjoying just engaging with our Kansans. Um, I'm, I grew up in Orlando, and so I've been here 15 years. I raised both my children right here in Little Rock, or not right here, but in the city of Little Rock, right here in this district. And uh, my buddies at home, they ask me, when are you coming back to Florida? And I tell them, this is my home. This is where I live. This is where I love to be. Um, the natural state is not just a moniker for us, but I can leave my home and be an hour outside of Little Rock and be looking at waterfalls with my children. So we have to protect this environment. We have to continue to understand that there's a lot at stake with these elections. And so I'd encourage everyone to get out and vote on May 7th through May 22nd to cast your ballot. Uh, you, if you're not familiar with our campaign, our record and the things that we've been doing in this great state on behalf of young people in the foster care system, mentoring young people. Um, we're director of operations at a, at a graduate school where we, uh, again, engage young people and talk to them about servant leadership and their role in our society. Um, I am so humbled and honored to be here with you all tonight and look forward to being the next democratically elected representative for the great people of Arkansas. God bless you and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Thank you.